What's going on everybody? Welcome to the channel. My name is Ryan Corcoran. I'm a real estate investor, entrepreneur, business owner. I created this channel so I could give you free information on how to live a huge life through real estate, through business. Thank you for joining. Please hit the subscribe button if you like these videos if you want to learn more about how to do the same things I have done at a fairly young age very quickly. Thinking huge, right? And so that's really the theme of this. Think as big as you possibly can. No one can tell you no. Go out and make things happen. All right, today we're gonna actually break down something really, something that I get asked all the time. And it's, how do you analyze a multifamily property if it's six units or larger? And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up my computer screen. We're gonna basically go through a deal that I just purchased how I run all the numbers, what it looks like in the end, and hopefully this helps you. Again, if you like this, please hit the subscribe button. It helps push these videos to other people, or more people, I should say, uh, so everybody can learn for free. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, so real quick, I know I said I'm gonna break down a multifamily deal for you, but I just wanna give you a little background on this deal. This deal is a 13-unit property in Bristol, Rhode Island. I purchased this deal about 11 months ago. Essentially, I moved to Rhode Island not too long ago, uh, but a year and a half, two years ago. When I moved here, I did what I tell everybody to do um, when you're networking. Who'd you use for a real estate agent, right? You ask that agent, who is the best attorney? You ask that attorney who the best real estate agent is, who are the best investors, right? And you just keep asking people, who are the best, who are the best? You set up meetings with these people, get on the phone with them, figure out what they're doing in their life, bring massive value to them, and in return, you start to make money. Now, I asked my agent, who I used to purchase my property, who the best investors were. He sent me to somebody, who then sent me to another agent. I connected with that agent. He ended up having this deal in his back pocket. I, you know, I, I paid him a few thousand bucks um, outside of the transaction for kicking me the deal. All right, so let's dig into this so you guys can see exactly what happened, what went down, and where we are at right now. This really quickly. All right, so. We have a 13 unit in Bristol, Rhode Island, as I talked about. This was actually four separate buildings on one lot. In fact, they all shared the same parking. Um, so there's 15 parking spots with this build with these buildings. There was actually a cottage out back. There was a four unit, a six unit, and a three unit. So the town has a nine unit combined, which is the six and the three. And then, uh, I'm sorry, the six, um, yeah, the six and the three. And then um, they have the other four, the four units over here. So 13 total units. So when I purchased this property, here were the rents. Actually, I think I even have this more simplified for you. Here we go, we'll come down here. So when I purchased this, all 13 units, here was the total, here were the rents. Now, so you can see total monthly income, $12,885. Now, initially the seller wanted $1.7 million for this property. I, because I know the cap rate in Bristol, I knew I wasn't gonna be able to pay that much for it, right? And so what we ended up doing was haggling back and forth. And I, what I essentially did was I took this number and then I got the property taxes from the town. I called my insurance agent and figured out how much my insurance was gonna be. I have my maintenance as 5% of the gross income. They can see 5% of the gross income. Heat is zero, tenants pay everything. Electric, tenants pay everything except for the common. Water and sewer. Why was this so low? Now, with this property, tenants actually paid for the majority of the water. There was only a handful of units that didn't actually pay for their own water, surprisingly. Garbage, 205. Management, I actually have at 10%, even though I know I'm gonna get it at 7%, but I use this because when I show a prospective seller these numbers and they look at the net operating income, they see 93,000 when they thought it was gonna be much higher, it really puts it in perspective, okay? And so essentially what I did was I know that the cap rate in this area is about a six. And so when I plugged in my cap rate, as you can see up here, that puts me to a $1.56 million purchase price. Now, I ended up closing this property for $1.592 million. We ended up using a bridge loan to purchase this property. Uh, and so uh, we put 10% down. So we put about 200 grand down. We went in and we did rehab. Now, I've just broke down all the units here. Essentially, it was about $130,000 worth of rehab. And then this is the this is the best part, ready? So we come to the as complete. So our rents now are gonna be 
uh, so we went from we went from twelve thousand eight hundred eighty-five, and I got the pro forma to look like this now, right? So from twelve hundred to thirteen fifty, nine thirty-five to eleven fifty, right? So all of these, and actually, um, it's actually a little bit higher than this. I forgot one of these is sixteen. This one right here, unit five, is actually sixteen hundred, uh, and so we're actually upwards of. Oh, 16 and out. anyways, just just for math sake, $16,200 um, from 1285. That's a large increase. Now, property tax are obviously going to go up. Insurance went up a little bit um, because I was doing a rehab loan. Uh, and so I had to actually have a construction insurance as well. And so that's actually going to go back down to probably 600 uh, once I once this is fully refinanced. Uh, maintenance is going to go up a little bit only because the rents goes up vacancy only because the rent went up heat stays the same electric I dropped actually because I was able to put a bunch of LED lights in I was able to figure out why the bill was 125 just for common areas um, we had we made it so um, there's motion lights instead of uh, flip flip switches on at all times the water actually went up a little bit so when I bought this the seller was obviously not super truthful for with me uh, but anyways 215 bucks a month roughly garbage stayed the same and management I dropped down because I knew I was going to have somebody at five percent so look at that that's a huge that's four hundred dollar difference so we just took our net operating income from ninety three thousand to one thirty one now if you use that same purchase price that's an eight and a half cap now I know that this thing is going to appraise at a six cap because I just I, I know the location right and so that's where we go to here right so let's go to the as complete Rent is now 214 in gross. Taxes for the year 18. Insurance. So the all these numbers, guys, if you look at this, this is all from my other sheet. I just multiply everything by 12, right? Okay. So we get an NOI of roughly $135,606. Now, uh, mortgage um, is about 87,000 bucks per year. That puts us at a net profit of about 48 grand per year. Now, like I said before, I know this thing is going to appraise at a six cap. So what do we do? We take this net operating income, we divide it by 0 0.06 for a six cap, and it gives me a value of $2,169,696. I can then pull a loan for 75% of that at $1.627 million, allowing me to cash out $77,272. Now that's in a picture perfect world. We ended up spending $150,000 in rehab. Uh, interest rates went up higher. Things changed, right? However, this number actually went to 2.215 million. And so I was able to actually get a loan for higher and we were able to cash out even more. Now, why did this happen? Well, like I said before, I was able to decrease a bunch of expenses. There were other comps in the area that sold higher. I got the income higher. They saw the asset now as a very well-stabilized asset. The units are all turned over. It's presentable, right? It, it looks like it should be higher value than it actually was. I really hope this helps, guys. This is just a quick analysis of what I do. Um, quick spreadsheet. So I really suggest, you know, if you want to throw something else in here, you could throw capital expenditures in here. The reason why I didn't put CapEx in here for 5% is because I knew I was gonna redo this whole building essentially, and so I know my CapEx is gonna be very, very minimal for a long time. In fact, I'll probably end up selling this property before um, I ever cap I ever have to do CapEx. Um, and so that's, uh, that's my analysis, and that's how I leave zero dollars into a deal and make 50,000 per year. All right.